Next up, we have Lawrence Abeda with App City Life. Lawrence is the COO and co-founder of App City Life. He's been a software engineer for 20 years. He was an original software architect of SMS for Microsoft Back Office. He's developed enterprise solutions for Disney, Dell, and Walmart. Welcome, Lawrence. Thank you for having me. Um, so our company is out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, we've been around since the iPhone's been around. And um, being that we were in, uh, I've worked with the same guys for 25 years. This is my third company. And uh, fortunately, I've had exits of both the last two. So um, when we saw the mobile uh, phone app, the smartphone, we saw the initial problem that we had solved on the web days for Microsoft. We thought it's going to be times with, with these smart devices. And so we started working on architecture. Um, and our CEO had the idea, and it was really to, to solve a publishing problem on mobile. And our CEO said, you know, the place to be is open data. We looked at that market and we decided, you know, we need to really target a platform for making it easy to publish open data on mobile, work with beacons, work with watches. And so that's what we have here. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do here. And if you want to learn more, hopefully you'll take uh, our talk tomorrow. And then hopefully do a workshop and maybe build some apps if, while you were here. Uh, to, to tell you a little bit about the problems that we solve, so cities are producing data in many formats. Uh, you know, a lot of great companies, uh, Accela, Socrata, uh, Esri, all producing data. Our city produces their, their own data out of XML, JSON, uh, CSV, and so forth. We saw a real problem, and so we created a cloud platform <laughs> that takes that data, makes it uniform, so that we can easily use it uniformly on mobile. And we have an app server that we have this idea of containers where we can actually load any kind of app we want to within any one of our apps that is in the world. And the reason that's important is because there's so much data coming out there that people want to have a uniform experience and maybe just even have one app for their city and be able to have, in a case like in New York City, 3,000 data sets to deal with. So we, we solve that problem with it. With so we, we track analytics. Users will let us so that we can give this back to the cities and they can make solve real problems. And I'm not going to get into the rest of it, but it has to do with work with small businesses. Uh, but I'd just like to tell you a little bit about some of the stories, that, the things that we're solving. So our city first came to us and said, hey, you, see you guys are producing these really cool apps out there. Can you do that for us for open data? And so we produced the, their transit system app. And immediately, it started saving them money. The first year, $500,000 that they saved them in phone calls because people stopped coming up to the bus, asking where the bus was, went 311. They just started looking at the live tracking themselves. Um, so then we moved on to other things, things like bioparks and gardens and school systems. And we have about 13 apps for our city. And then eventually, we got invited out to Silicon Valley. Uh, Palo Alto, um, uh, Jonathan Reichenthal said, you know, we're doing a hackathon here for Hack My Ride for the Silicon Valley Transit System, GTA. You guys ought to come out and participate. So we came out here like we are here at this one. We did a little workshop. And one of the things that we really liked about our platform is that we saw a need everywhere with all the hackathons that we've been going to is that um, there's a lot of developers who are solving problems. But there are a lot more citizens besides developers who want to solve problems. So this is actually a non-developer pr uh, platform where you don't have to write Objective-C or Java, but can create native apps. And at the, the case of the VTA, uh, they had a competition. And three developers, or actually not developers, three non-developers actually won the competition. They produced an app that is actually, we're starting a project with the Silicon Valley now to put beacons on a bus to do onboarding and offboarding. And that was a great example of someone who doesn't know how to develop yet wants to solve a civic problem. And there's many people like that in every city that we go to. And so um, that's what this platform is about. And uh, one of the cool things that we're working now is with now is watches with the uh, haptic uh, features on here. And also um, with beacons. And I'll tell you about one cool project that we're doing right now. There's a park that has um, came to us for a project so that um, the, um, the signs for Braille were too expensive for them to do. They were about 50,000 per, per, uh, per sign. And the entire park is with, does, has things like swings and everything else that's in it for um, uh, handicap, um, for ADA. And so they wanted a way to give information to people uh, who are either uh, visually impaired. So we have a new project starting with them where we're putting beacons at every device so that when they walk up to it, we can tell that they've walked up to this device 
and start giving them information. They'll get verbal uh, cues on how to use the equipment and, and so forth. So, um, so a lot of cool things that we're solving with our platform in cities. And we're expanding. Uh, we're not salt, We're actually charging developers or non-developers at all. We're actually um, we work. Just, we're going to open up this this year in New York City, uh, here, and everywhere else, and so that people, uh, normal citizens, can just solve problems for their cities without having to be a developer. Thanks so much. I'd love to see how some of this could integrate with some of Jed's ideas. Particularly interested in the smartwatch component of it because I. I've been enjoying mine, like I think a lot of folks are these days, as they get their new Apple Watch and such.